morning and welcome to the service with a difference. It is the 5th of April. It is Wednesday of Holy Week and Holy Week again is the, the final week of our journey through Lent and Lent is the season of preparation for the season of Easter. Um, we have looked through this season of Lent at the way in which we fulfill our vow of love to God um, and we find a good way of doing that in the baptismal promises that say I will turn away from everything that is not God. I will turn towards everything that is of God. And so that looks like me repenting of sin and turning from evil. That looks like me trusting in Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. That looks like me obeying Christ and serving him in the church and in the world. And from Palm Sunday through to Easter Sunday, we are looking at the way in which Jesus fulfills his vow of love to us. And we get a sense of what Jesus has been doing and how he has been fulfilling that vow of, of love for us. Um, when he stands up in Luke chapter 4, we read from verse 18 to 19 as he quotes from Isaiah 61. And he says to them, as he quotes from Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind. He has sent me to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so today we are looking at that part where he says, I have come to proclaim freedom for for the prisoners um, today we are also reading from isaiah chapter 50 we're going to read from verse 4 to verse 9 again it is one of the passages that speak about the servant of the lord and and this one speaks about how the servant is obedient where the wicked are not obedient to god the servant is obedient to god god has given him a tongue that is instructed in the way of the lord a tongue that can bring um, healing to God's people that can bring new life to, to the weary. Then we're also going to be reading from Psalm 70, um, just a psalm in which the psalmist is saying, please hurry God, hurry hurry to save me. Um, may, may everybody who seeks you be glorified. May everybody who stands against you be put to shame. And then we're going to be reading from Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 3 where the writer is speaking to the community and he is saying to them, in light of all of those in your faith who were considered faithful because they trusted in God, not because they kept the law, but because they trusted in God, in light of them, with them being your example, keep your eyes fixed on God. Keep your eyes fixed on Christ, who is the author and the perfecter of, of our faith. Turn away from everything that is not him and just keep your eyes fixed on him. Use him as your example of what it what it means to be in relationship with God and what it means to be faithful to God. And then we're also going to be reading from John chapter 13. We're going to read from verse 21 to verse 32, where, where Jesus has just washed the disciples' feet. They are sitting down for the meal, um, and he is troubled in his spirit. He says to his disciples, one of you is going to betray me. And John asks him, which one? He says, the one who takes this bread takes the bread, he gives it to, to Judas and tells Judas to go and do what Judas needs to, to go and do. And then Jesus says, well, I'm not glorified. God is glorified in me. There's nothing we can do to change the story and the outcome of the story now that Judas has gone to go and betray Jesus. Again, ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as you read through them, we give God thanks for them. And we pray that he will bless them to us on this Wednesday night of, of Holy Week. As we've been looking um, this week at Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, Jesus' job description, the way in which he says he will fulfill his vow of love, that God has empowered him to fulfill and has tasked him to fulfill. Today we are, are looking at how Jesus says, I've come to proclaim freedom for, for the prisoners. And we may be asking, so what are we prisoners to? Um, why are we prisoners? You know, what makes us a prisoner? And I think we're all prisoners to something. There is there is something that has control of our lives, something that we have no, no control over or, or we struggle to control. We're all slaves. In other language, we're all slaves to something. We're addicted to something. You know, we're addicted to our sin. We're addicted to our need for power. We're, we're addicted to our need to always be right, to know better than God. We are addicted to our foolishness. And so one of the ways in which Jesus loves us is by setting us free to become all that we can become. Because there are there are so many things that hold us down. It's things we've done or not done, things other people have done or not done. And, and so we are restrained from fully realizing our capacity 
as co-creators with God because we struggle to let go of so much that is not of God. We struggle to embrace so much that is of God. And not only does Jesus set us free, but he, but he helps us to get up from our bottoms and to, and to get on with, with living life. He helps us face the obstacles that come because choosing to follow the way of God goes against choosing the way of survival. And, and we know that flourishing and surviving are, are not the same things. And so Jesus comes to proclaim freedom. And, and as that part of God's creation that is created in his image, you know, we have always been free to choose. But for some reason, we tend to choose the things that take our choices from us. You know, we, we choose the things that hold us ransom. We choose the things that, that hold us captive. And that's, and that's why Jesus comes to tell us that, that we are free, that we don't have to be bound by all the stuff that keeps us captive. It's, it's in his death, it's in his love that he has done everything to, to set us free. In him, we find forgiveness. In him, we find new beginnings. In him, we, we find a new purpose. In him, we find the help that we need to let go of the chains that we have carried for so long. In him, we, we find the courage to let go of the sin that so easily entangles. In proclaiming freedom, Jesus gives us permission to accept his invitation of freedom or to reject it. You know, Jesus gave Judas the choice to accept his invitation of friendship, to, to accept his invitation of forgiveness, to accept his invitation of, of healing right up until the end. You know, he gives him this piece of bread at the meal as, as a way of reminding him that he hasn't written him off, but, but he, he still cares deeply about him. So when Jesus gives Judas the piece of bread at that meal, he is saying, receive my love, receive my friendship, re receive my, my provision, trust, trust in my decision. And, and Judas takes the bread because he still cares about Jesus, even though he doesn't agree with the way that Jesus is doing things. And so Judas chose to follow his own heart. He refused to listen to what Jesus had to say because he had already decided that he knew better than Jesus. That's, that's Adam and Eve's sin. They, they decided they knew better than God. God says, don't eat from the tree um, of, 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 of knowledge of good and evil. And they said, well, maybe God isn't right. We want to work it out for ourselves. And so they chose to know better than God. And so they chose to believe that they knew better than God and they made a decision based on, on that belief. And that's, and that's what we all do. That's what sin is. Judas believed that, that Jesus had the power to save them from their enemies. And so he set his face like flint to, to the way of war against people instead of listening to the Holy Spirit who was leading them towards the war for the souls of people instead of the war with people. Judas, Judas wouldn't allow Jesus to release him from his many prisons. He, he did care about Jesus, but he was in survival mode and he was blinded to what was going on around him. He, he stole money from the purse just in case none of this worked out. You know, he was, he was willing to, to betray Jesus, to force Jesus' hand. And then when all of that fell apart, he, he believed that he couldn't face God. He believed he couldn't repent of his sin. Um, and so his prisons eventually overwhelmed him and he, and he drowned in his pain. He drowned in his guilt, in the guilt that he carried of being instrumental in having his friend and his teacher put to death. He took his own life because even though he didn't agree with Jesus, he cared about him. And he couldn't face what he had, had done to him. Would there have been forgiveness for Judas had he cared to stick around long enough to hear about Jesus' resurrection? And had he the courage to face Jesus after all of this? And I have no doubt that there would have been forgiveness. You know, it was always going to be this way. And if it wasn't Judas who betrayed him, there would have been someone somewhere who would have told the religious leaders where to, where to find Jesus. I have no doubt that Jesus would never have given up on Judas. You know, in the same way that he went to go and find Peter and restore Peter, I have no doubt he would have gone to go and find Judas and, and restore Judas. Um, and we can only speculate that when Jesus entered through death into the gates of hell and led everybody out in his, his train in glory, that, that Judas would have been one of the number that, that he brought out. But before... Before you stand in judgment of, of Judas, I'm sure that we've all experienced that being set free from our prisons, from the things that bind us, is, is not a simple task. You know, one of, one of the biggest fears that inmates experience when, when their sentence is over is, is how are they going to cope in the world outside? They, they don't know how they're going to cope with freedom. They don't know how they're going to face the people that they've harmed. They don't know how they're going to manage with, with everything. You know, they've become institutionalized and they have become used to the way things work within the prison system and, and within the false sense of security that, that it is offered to them. In fact, many of them will commit crimes just so that they can get caught and be put back into, into the system. And the same is true of people who are trying to get out of abusive relationships or who have just gotten out of abusive relationships. The same is true of people who have given up 
an addiction to a drug or to, to something. You know, it's incredible how we will continue to sell ourselves back to the prisons that we were set free from because there is a sense of comfort in our discomfort. And in Isaiah, we read about the servant of the Lord as he speaks about the servant of the Lord and how the servant is obedient to God. It, the servant of the Lord is sitting at, at God's feet. The servant of the Lord is listening to the Holy Spirit who opens his heart to those who are tired of the way that the world is working. The Spirit is opening the servant's heart to those who longed for, for a better world. Beatitudes, blessed are those who mourn, for, for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who mourn for the state of their souls and for the state of this world, because they are the ones who will be comforted. And so the Holy Spirit has given to the servant the words that they need to sustain the weary. The Holy Spirit has given them the words they need to, to encourage God's people, to bring healing to God's people. But obviously this ministry of healing, this ministry of encouraging, this ministry of sustaining the weary, that obviously goes against the way of the world that uses people as vehicles to comfort, that relegates personalities to nothing more than, than tools of expedience. And this ministry is in conflict with our own desire to trust that our freedom is, is better than our containment. And, and if you have tried to fast through the season of Lent, you will know that especially if you are fasting um, something that has got power over you, um, depending on what it is, you, you will know that, that two things have happened. The first thing is that we justify reasons why we can continue to, to do that or to use whatever it is we have given up. You know, we, we say things like, it's just once, um, it's not going to hurt anybody, I've always done it, it hasn't affected me badly. Um, and it might not have been anything bad, but the struggle we have with giving something not bad up is the same as the struggle we have with giving something bad up. In fact, the, the struggle we have with giving something bad up is the same as the struggle we have with picking up something that is good. You know, most smokers give up smoking many times before they, they, they get it right at last, you know, because we we let down our God and we offer ourselves many reasons why we should just, just have one more. You know, and anyone who has tried to start gym has many reasons why tomorrow is a good time to start in, instead of instead of today. And the second thing that happens to us, so the first thing is, you know, we try and convince our, ourselves to pick up what it is we have let go. But the second thing that happens is that when we go against the flow of the mainstream, the fight from the mainstream to get us back into the mainstream is, is hard. You know, it's not easy to change something in our lives when the way we live our lives is the most comfortable for everybody around us, for those who are needing us to feed the system that keeps them in power. And so the servant in, in Isaiah is aware of what happens when you challenge the status quo. You are going to face opposition from yourself. You are going to face opposition from others. And that's why your eyes need to be fixed on God. That's why you need to be attentive to the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to set you free from everything that shackles you. But to stay free, you need to make sure that you keep your eyes fixed on, on Jesus. Judas and the religious leaders who were opposed to, to Jesus, you know, they, they had different ideas of what, what freedom looked like. But both Judas and the religious leaders opposed to Jesus had, had different ideas of, of what freedom looked like to Jesus' idea of what freedom looked like. And so they try to force Jesus to submit to their way of doing things because it is, it is never, never easy to change the status quo, the way things are, are done. And so that's why... The, the, the writer of Hebrews is, is fully aware of, of this experience. And again, just Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3, he says it so nicely. Considering the freedom that Christ has bought for you, the freedom that he has proclaimed, the freedom he has paid with his own blood, not into the man-made temple, but into the temple of God, into the presence of God. Considering the freedom that he has proclaimed, and since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses who trusted in God and in the freedom that comes from being in God, let us throw off everything, the writer says. Let us throw off everything that hinders. Let us throw off the sin that so easily entangles and, and let us run with perseverance the race that has been marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Jesus is the author, the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him endured the cross. He scorned its shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so consider him who endured such opposition from sinful people so that you will not grow weary, so that you will not lose heart. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Let's pray. Lord God, in so many cases, we don't even know what it is we are bound by. We don't know what it is that we, we need to be set free from. We don't, we don't know what it means to live in the freedom of our creation. 
We're so easily blinded and entangled by the world around us. We're so easily blinded and entangled by our physical needs that we get confused with, with who we are in you. We forget, Lord God, that we, we are physical and spiritual and social and intellectual. We forget that everything affects everything. And so give us the courage to embrace our freedom in you. Give us, give us the patience to sit at your feet, to learn from you as we live into the freedom that you have bought for us, as we live into the freedom that you have offered to us. And so we ask, Lord God, that you hear our prayers. We pray it in your precious name. Amen. Thank you.